There are some strange things you might not know about Prince Charles, from his need for a personal toilet seat while he travels, to his weird egg choices, to his connection to Barbara Streisand. A lot of us have specific travel rituals. Some of us prefer to bring along our own pillow, and others like to pack their go-to shampoo. But Prince Charles really takes the cake as the royal travels with his entire bedroom set. And as strange as it sounds, it's apparently true. Journalist and author Tom Bauer reported in his book Rebel Prince, The Power, Passion, and Defiance of Prince Charles that when Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles were invited to a friend's home in Northeast England, he allegedly demanded that his entire bedroom set be brought with them. A truck full of his belongings arrived at the home a day before the heir's arrival and included the prince's orthopedic bed along with his own bedsheets. In addition to the complete bedroom sets, Charles was apparently accompanied by his own toilet seat specialty toilet paper, his choice of whiskey, bottled water, and two landscape paintings of the Scottish Highlands. Unsurprisingly, he was not invited back. Prince Charles has a green thumb, but his passion reportedly extends into the strange territories of talking to plants. According to The Express, Charles was working with the Woodland Trust and BBC Countryfile in order to supply trees to different gardens and sites throughout the United Kingdom, as part of a scheme to promote planting and sustainability. In a tweet regarding the matter, the Clarence House Twitter account revealed that Charles often gives a branch a friendly shake to wish it well. Yes, the heir to the British throne likes to give trees little handshakes. Of the initiative, Charles shared his interest in providing solace and comfort for people outdoors, especially in light of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Announcing the campaign, Charles said, I know that so many people during this terribly difficult year have had their appreciation of the trees and other green spaces around them deepened. Therefore, it is our duty, given how long that it takes for a tree to mature, to plant trees now for future generations to enjoy. Another strange aspect about the royal family, and specifically Prince Charles, is that the royal will have the ability to change his name once he becomes king. Charles has been waiting to be king for quite literally decades, and of course, we all know him by his given name as a prince. But taking the throne after his mother, Queen Elizabeth II, could change that. According to the Constitution Unit at University College London's School of Public Policy, as king, Charles will be able to choose his own name, just as his predecessors did before him. King Edward VII chose Edward as his regnal title. Prince Charles's Christian names are Charles Philip Arthur George. Instead of becoming King Charles, he might choose to become King George VII or King Philip or King Arthur. They say that you can tell a lot about a person based on their ability to give good gifts. And when it comes to Prince Charles, let's just say that he doesn't have the best track record. As noted by the Evening Standard, one such instance came when famed musician Ozzy Osbourne was in a biking accident that left him with fractured ribs, a fractured collarbone, and a badly damaged neck. The prince wanted to extend his sympathies to the music legend for enduring such an incident and sent over a bottle of scotch as a gesture. Now, you might be thinking that this kind of gift would be appreciated, and while it's technically the thought that counts, Sharon Osbourne made it quickly known that her husband has been famously sober since the mid-2010s. Sharon shared during her once-hosted talk show, We heard from Prince Charles and never let anyone say he's a bad guy, cause he's all right by the Osbournes. He sent my husband a bottle of scotch, which of course he's not going to drink. Hopefully, Charles does his homework before giving gifts in the future. We've all heard about fixtures such as libraries, town halls, and museums being named after an important figure or politician. But what about a species of animal? When it comes to oddities about Prince Charles, one stood out in particular, and that's that the prince had a previously unknown frog species named after him. Researchers published in the Zootaxa Journal estimated that they had found two new species of frogs in the Ecuadorian forests. The discovery was rather fantastic, as the area in which the frogs were found has suffered greatly from a chytrid epidemic, which has killed a huge huge number of amphibians globally. As many royal fans know, Charles has been at the forefront of environmentalism and has spent a good deal of his public life advocating for more eco-friendly alternatives in order to curb damage to the planet. In honor of the prince and his contribution to the field of eco-advocacy, one of the new frog species was named after him, which is most certainly an honor. Many childhood experiences are defined by a hobby. For Prince Charles, his interests as a young man materialized in a rather niche way, and in 1975, he officially joined the Magic Circle, a secretive group of magic enthusiasts, some of whom have passed down membership within their families. Charles couldn't wave his royal wand and join the exclusive club simply because he was a royal. Instead, he was reportedly invited to the secretive association by his great-uncle Earl Mountbatten, who himself had been a member for more than two decades. Charles's interest in magic carried on throughout his life, and when it came time to celebrate his 70th birthday, he made sure that it was a magical affair topped to the brim with Britain's finest magicians.
Prince Charles is known for his eco-friendly approach to life as well as his advocacy work when it comes to the environment. But being mindful of the planet has materialized itself in a rather interesting way for the prince. As noted by The Guardian, Charles revealed that his prized Aston Martin car now runs on leftover wine and cheese instead of the traditional petrol gasoline. My old Aston Martin, which I've had for 51 years, that runs on, can you believe this, surplus English white wine. However, according to Greg Archer, Britain's director of clean transport campaign group TNE, the prince's alternative fuel might be doing more harm than good. Prince Charles's quaint solution should not be mistaken for a serious solution to decarbonize vehicles. On a large scale, biofuels do more harm than good, driving deforestation and land use change that worsens the climate crisis. The security of nature's entire life support system is banking on it. Before Prince Charles became romantically involved with Princess Diana, he was dating her sister, Sarah Spencer. As noted by Marie Claire, Charles was courting Sarah, who was six years older than Diana in 1977. At the time, Charles was 28 and Sarah was 22. The pair went on a skiing trip to Switzerland together, and while there aren't a ton of details about their relationship, it seemed to fizzle out over time. Sarah was very frank in an interview regarding their relationship once it had come to a close. According to The Mirror, Sarah allegedly shared, I would not marry Charles if he were the dustman or the king of England. She also reportedly said, Charles makes me laugh a lot. I really enjoy being with him, but there is no chance of my marrying him. I'm not in love with him, and I wouldn't marry anyone I didn't love. We all know that Prince Charles had an affair with Camilla Parker Bowles and dated Diana Spencer's older sister before turning his attention to his teenage bride. But you might not know that the prince once reportedly got close with none other than Barbara Streisand. Charles reportedly always had a keen admiration for the Tony winner, and he even went to the set of Funny Lady, the sequel to Funny Girl, to meet her. In an interview on Lorraine, Streisand shared, He asked to meet me, so he came to the recording studio. We became friends, and I loved spending some time at Highgrove for a weekend fundraiser and going through his gardens. Vanity Fair later detailed that while Streisand was staying in London, she walked into her hotel room and noticed a bouquet of fresh-cut flowers sitting on the table. The singer revealed, I said, who sent me that? And my assistant said, a fan called Charles, and I said, really? Let me see the note. And there was his seal. She just mistook it for a fan. It was so funny, I thought, you know? That's Prince Charles! A strange fact about Prince Charles is that he was significantly bullied while in school. The heir to the throne apparently thrived during his at-home education in his early years, but once he was eight years old, he attended Hill House School and later Cheam School, the latter of which is the oldest private school in Britain. Boarding school was a reality of Charles's life, as it was for many royal children, but Charles was reportedly extremely homesick and suffered as a result. By the time he attended Gordonston, the alma mater of his father, Prince Philip, the bullying he experienced went from bad to worse. According to the Radio Times, Charles referred to his time in school as, quote, a prison sentence because he was bullied and experienced significant isolation as a result. As reported by the publication, one of Charles's classmates shared he was crushingly lonely for most of his time there. The wonder is that he survived with his sanity intact. Surprisingly, the heir to the British throne was reportedly the subject of matchmaking efforts by former President Richard Nixon. Charles went to the United States in 1970. He was 21 at the time and arguably the world's most eligible bachelor. Nixon introduced the prince to his daughter, Trisha Nixon, and the two apparently went on to spend a good deal of time together during the prince's trip. Per The Express, royal biographer Anthony Holden revealed, seating plans constantly had Charles and Trisha side by side while the program had them spending all of each day together. Sadly, the president's efforts were largely unsuccessful, and according to The Express, Charles was distinctly annoyed and found Trisha plastic and artificial. With the amount of world traveling that Prince Charles has gotten to experience, you'd think that he'd be a fan of international cuisines, but apparently that couldn't be further from the truth. According to royal author Sally Bedell Smith, Charles is such a picky eater that he pretty much sticks to the same breakfast meal every morning of eggs or cereal grains with honey served with fruit and tea. He also reportedly has a tendency to skip lunch. What's more is that Charles's breakfast specifications are so detailed that multiple eggs are boiled for him just so that the right kind of hard-boiled egg reaches his table. Jeremy Paxman, a journalist and broadcaster, shared in his book on royalty because his staff were never quite sure whether the egg would be precisely to the satisfactory hardness, a series of eggs was cooked and laid out in an ascending row of numbers. 
A lot of us would take advantage of the royal perks if we had access to them, as it all sounds rather wonderful. For some members of the royal family, it's just the way of life that they have always known. Prince Charles, however, is strangely a workaholic. As noted by the BBC, Charles works seven days a week, despite the assurance associated with his position as heir to the throne. He reportedly starts his workday shortly after breakfast and is known to work well past midnight. As detailed in the BBC documentary Prince, Son, and Heir, Charles at 70, even the royal sons admitted that their father should cool his workaholic jets. Prince Harry said during the documentary, he does need to slow down. This is a man who has dinner ridiculously late at night, and then goes to his desk later that night and will fall asleep on his notes, to the point where he'll wake up with a piece of paper stuck to his face. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about the royal family are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.